Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. And to all of my U.S. listeners, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. We're going to bring you our Thanksgiving special of the amazing world of radio. And for that, we're going to turn to Heartbeat Theater. Uh, Some people have an idea that after September 30th of 1962, that audio drama in the United States went away. That's traditionally the date given for... Uh, the end of the golden age of radio. Well, that's not the case. Uh, There has not been a week that there hasn't been at least one radio drama episode released, and sometimes multiple uh, audio dramas. What September 30th, 1962 marked was the end of network radio programs that had been airing since Uh, radio drama's heyday in the United States. Some of the chief producers of radio drama uh, since 1962 have been our religious organizations. We played you an episode of The Eternal Light, which while not from after 1962, the program did carry uh, radio drama after the end of the golden age of radio. And we're going to bring you an episode of Heartbeat Theater. Heartbeat Theater was produced by the Salvation Army and aired throughout the country starting in 1956 and continuing all the way till 1985. Heartbeat Theater really focused strongly on the work and efforts of the uh, Salvation Army rather than a particular theological perspective. And throughout its run, it continued to have a lot of uh, Hollywood actors come in and uh, perform episodes, including many that uh, appear during the Golden Age of Radio. Well, today's episode originally aired November 24th, 1963, and the title is John Ball's Thanksgiving. Welcome, everyone, to Heartbeat Theater. This is the sound of trouble. It will strike relentlessly with unerring accuracy at all men everywhere in the world sometime in their life. To meet this challenge, wherever it strikes, whatever its nature, an ever-vigilant corps of men and women stand ready to do battle, the soldiers of the Salvation Army, with heart to God and hand to man. From Hollywood, the Salvation Army presents Heartbeat Theater, stories of the widespread, vital, and necessary work of the dedicated men and women of this worldwide organization. This is your host, C.P. McGregor, inviting you to be our guest for the next half hour. Our story this week is concerned with an ideal. Now, an ideal is not something to put on a pedestal and admire from a distance. It's usually a clear-cut, workable, practical way to get something accomplished. Our story is a Thanksgiving story. Ideally, Thanksgiving is a unique American holiday during which we raise our voice in thanks to Almighty God for His many blessings. But how many of us actually do this? And if not, why not? We may find some answers in our story, John Ball's Thanksgiving, written by Robert McKenzie and starring Victor Rodman as John Ball, with Bill Adelson as Davy. Here's Act One of John Ball's Thanksgiving.
Howdy. Yeah, beautiful day, ain't it? My name's John Ball. I'm a walker. <laughs> well, some folks would call me a bum, a tramp, but that ain't really the way of it. I work for my living. Just never could settle down to work in the same job in the same place all year round. Nothing wrong with that now, is there? Uh, come on, walk along with me and we'll talk some. Yeah. You ever do much walking? Best thing in the world for you. Good exercise and you'll see things you've never seen before. I got a job waiting for me the other side of those hills over there, so we'll cut across through those woods there and save about five miles extra walking. <laughs> Gotta hop over this fence here. Uh, 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 make it all right? Good. Yep, I've walked all over the country. I, uh, I do chores, you know, odd jobs, men things, tell a story, sing a song now and then, earn myself a meal in the bed for the night. Yeah, I, I've met all kinds of people done all kinds of work and had more fun the last 50 years than any other 10 people I know. I lived a fuller life, too. You know, kind of life I think the good Lord meant me to live. Ah, listen to them leaves under your feet, snapping and crackling. I bet you ain't walked through autumn leaves since you was a kid. Have you, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's a fine, cheerful sound to them. Like they're saying, welcome home. Hey, look back there at the road. Look at that fella go. Going so fast, he'll miss everything. Come on down this way. There's a little stream we got across. That's the trouble with a lot of people these days. They go too fast. Always on the move. They don't give themselves a chance to sit and do a little thinking now and then. Yeah, they really don't know what life's really like. Now, you, you, you look at all we got right here. Blue sky, birds singing, grass and trees and leaves, and nice warm sun, little breeze blowing through the pines, making the whole world smell like a Christmas tree. Uh -huh. Ah, listen to that wind from home. Ah, smell the air. <laughs> yeah, how long since you heard that sound, huh? And then you take that fellow that roared down the road just now. Why, he's going so fast he's going to miss all this. He don't even know it's here. He started out somewhere just like you. And he'll likely come to a stop somewhere. But in between, ah, there's nothing, and that's too bad. Because the in between, it's the only thing that counts. Oh, uh, here's that stream I told you about. Pretty, ain't it? Good water, too. Have a swallow? Ah, oh, boy. You don't find that kind of water in the city. No siree. <clears throat> okay, we'll cross over them rocks there. They're a little slippery, so watch your step. <laughs> I told you to watch your step. You're out of practice. Well, you just got your shoe wet. There's no harm done. Yeah, let's, uh, let's sit for a while. Take your shoes off. Stick your feet in the water, you know. Toss some rocks. How long has it been since you chunked rocks in the river and gave yourself a chance to think, huh? Yeah, it makes a nice sound, though, eh? <laughs> now, you, you take this time of year, uh, November. Leaves are turning color, dropping off the trees. Wind's got a little bite to it. Winter ain't far off. Crops are being harvested. Thanksgiving time. 
there. He is almost done. Good time for folks to take stock of themselves. Figure up what the year has brought them. Thank the good Lord for all the good things he's brought them. And uh, how much they brought to him. People used to know how to do that once. Not many take the time anymore. Haven't got the time, they say. Well, most of them have got the time. They just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> you know, sitting here tossing rocks brings a story to my mind. Just uh, about what we're discussing. Happened about three years ago, the uh, day before Thanksgiving. I had been walking all the morning. And long about noon, I come to stream. Just, just about like this one. young fella. Mind if I join you? I've been walking all morning. See the kind of tired. Okay. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's better. Yeah, I walked almost 12 miles this morning. Yeah? Time to rest. By feet. Well, I don't have anything. Oh, I didn't mean that. I got my own food in my sack. Uh, maybe you'd like some of mine. No. Thanks. Well, beautiful day, ain't it? What's beautiful about it? Probably rain before night. Well, what's wrong with a little rain? Cleans everything off. Freshens up the air. Little rain's a good thing to have. Huh. Glad you like it. Kind of fun tossing rocks, ain't it, huh? I do it myself quite a bit. Give the fellow a chance to think, you know, uh, kind of relax. Take it easy. Huh. What's your name, son? Mine's Ball, John Ball. David Tucker. Yeah, glad to know you, David. Tucker. Tucker, huh. Seems to me I remember some... Tuckers around these parts. I come through here about every three years or so. Tucker, Tucker, hmm. Yes. Your place is just across the river, the other side of these woods, ain't it? Now, how'd you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I did some work for your dad the last time I was through. I fixed a hole in the barn and mended some busted fences. Yes, uh, now I remember. He was about uh, 10 or 12 then. Uh, all arms and legs and busting out of your jeans. Uh, you, you you cut your finger on the saw one day trying to help me. You remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, 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 well. Small world, then. Ah, uh, seems to me your ma was... Ailed at the time. She's uh, better now, I imagine, huh? Yeah, she's better now. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Well, you've grown some since then. Just about a man now, eh, Davy? Yeah, just about. Ah, I bet you're looking forward to tomorrow, ain't you? Huh? Thanksgiving, all that good food. Oh, yeah. You, uh, having big doings at your place tomorrow? No, n nothing special. Why, sure it's special, son. No matter how much you got on the table, it, it's the spirit of the day that makes the difference. Counting up your blessings and thanking the good Lord for them. Look, I, I, I gotta go. Well, all right. it's all right with you. I'll, I'll go back with you. I'll see if your dad needs any work done. Don't bother. Huh? We couldn't pay you. Couldn't even put you up. And anyway, I, I'm not going back. Not going back? Well, why should I? Nothing to go back to but a broken down old farm. My folks breaking their necks to make ends meet. Most of the time they can't even do that. We haven't even got enough food in the house. 
Well, Davy, I'm sorry to hear that, but maybe with a little help. Help? You could, uh... We've been living on help for the last year. Oh? Charity's more like it. The only reason we've been able to eat is because other people bring us food. Oh, really? Bring us food. Yeah, huh. we can't even grow our own food. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm tired of living on handouts. Oh, well, now, now, wait a minute, Davy. I, I think you've got this help thing a little mixed up, ain't you? These ain't handouts. You ain't living on charity. It's just Well, I don't know what else it. you could call it. Maybe my folks haven't got any pride left, but well, I do. I not say that. I... We can't ever pay those people back. Never. And yesterday, the Salvation Army came around with a turkey and, and all the fixings for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. Oh? You know, yeah. They said they heard we were in trouble. Uh-huh. Well, it'll be a cold day before I eat any more of other people's food. Oh, no. You said I was just about a man. Well, well mister... I'm man enough to make my own way in this world, and I'm starting right now. So ends the first act of John Ball's Thanksgiving, starring Victor Rodman and Bill Idelson. Thanksgiving was meant to be a time of remembrance, a time for serious thought and sober summing up, a time for heartfelt thanks to God for his many and manifold blessings to all. May we suggest that each of you take a few minutes out this Thanksgiving and have a good look at your bank balance of life. Check the deposits and withdrawals, the balance of what you have given as against that which you have received. For, like any bank account, you only get out of life what you put into it. And then, just before you sit down to that marvelous dinner, bursting with color, and redolent with the fragrance of good cooking, give thanks to God, not only for the meal, but for everything large or small that you've received this year. And may we, along with the men and women of the Salvation Army, wish you a really meaningful Thanksgiving. Now, starring Victor Rodman and Bill Idelson, here is Act Two of John Ball's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Before you go, Davy, you uh, giving any thought to what you're going to do? I'll find something. Oh, I expect you will. But uh, will it be the right thing? Don't matter. I'll be making my own way. You know, a lot of people have said that, Davy, and ended up being awful sorry about what they settled for. What about your folks, Davy? Uh, what are they going to think? Well, it, it don't matter. Just be one less mouth to feed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned mouths to feed. It uh, reminded me I'm hungry. I think I got a couple of sandwiches here. Yeah, yeah here they are. Want what? No, thanks. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> man's got to make his way. He's got to eat, you know. Hmm. Ah, that's good. Roast beef. I'm not taking any more handouts. Oh, now, this ain't a handout, Davy. I just like company, Wally. Of course, you know what you want. Well. <laughs> I thought so. Here. Yeah. Uh, Davy. Huh? You ever given much thought to Thanksgiving? What it's about? Why we haven't? Just another day. Oh, no. No, it ain't. Not by a long shot. I suppose people have been celebrating Thanksgiving for a long, long time. Of course, they didn't always call it that, but uh, every year, long about harvest time and all the crops was in, put away for the winter, people usually take the time to say, Thank you, God. Got started here. And the pilgrims brought in their first hop. Uh, you know the story. You, uh, you heard it in school. You uh, probably heard, too, that except for what you'd call a handout, 
The pilgrims would have had a pretty thin winter. Huh? What do you mean? Well, the Indians brought in a lot of food for them. Corn, wild fowl, you know, things like that. Probably brought the first turkey to the first Thanksgiving dinner. So now, there's the first American Thanksgiving dinner. Out by hand. Well, you see anything wrong with that? Oh, no. Now, you take the Salvation Army you mentioned a few minutes ago. People that got you all riled up with a gift. You call it a handout. Well, now, these are a great bunch of people, Davy. And I've, I've seen their work time and again. I've helped them once in a while when I could. And they've helped me more than once. If you think that what they brought you was a handout, you should have seen what they were handed in 1917 in the trenches. I was there. I seen it. Coffee and donuts. Right up there in the front lines of the shells and bullets thick as fleas. And let me tell you, there was nobody so proud that they turned them down. Oh, well, that's different. No, no, no. No, it ain't, Davy. But it ain't right living on charity. If a man can't do for himself, why should others do for him? Davy, let's get a few things straight, huh? Charity is just an old-fashioned word for love. And there ain't nothing finer in the world than that. And when your ma was sick, you did everything you could to make her better. Because you loved her. When your dad took the help his neighbors offered him, it was because he wanted to help your ma and you. Because he loved her. Now... How's that any different from your neighbors helping you? They're just following the good book. Love your neighbors yourself. They know darn well you do the same for them. Now, ain't that right? Yeah, I, I, I guess it is. Right then. While well, the fuss. Baby, there's so many people busy asking God for things that they never take the time to thank him for things, too. And Thanksgiving is a fine day to take the time to do just that. You think about it for just a minute, you find a thousand things to thank God for. Thank Him for good neighbors and friends, for folks like the, like the Salvation Army who gave you a hand when you needed it. No strings attached. Thank Him for your good health and your ma's and your dad's. Thank Him for living in this great America of ours, for being able to go to school and learn enough to be whatever you want to be. And thank Him for a for a country where if you if you don't do so good one year, you can try again the next. And keep on trying if you have to. And Davy, while you're at it, thank him for all this you see around you. This wonderful, beautiful land of ours. It's really his, you know. All of it. We're just renting it. Free. And thank him for love, because without it, life just wouldn't be worth it. Now, would it, Davy? No, sir, I... I guess it'd be pure misery without it. <sighs> Davy, if you've learned that much today, you've learned more than most men. And you're just starting out. <laughs> yes. Uh-oh. Clouding up. Guess you were right, Davy. <laughs> First thing I've been I've been right about in quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Ball, it's yeah. it's gonna be pretty wet in a minute. I don't know how far we can stretch it, but I know the folks would like to see you again. And I'd sure appreciate it if you could see your way clear to to sharing Thanksgiving with us tomorrow. Davy boy, I'll not only accept your invitation with pleasure, but I'll bet that I can beat you back to your place. Come on. Well, it's not a great story, but uh makes a part, huh? Folks have just stopped making a lot of noise and fuss. Stop worrying about how fast they're going. Start worrying about where and why they're going. Life would be a whole lot easier for all of us. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's my last rock. I'm judging from the sun there, it's... Time for me to get moving again. Coming any further this way? No? Well, been nice talking with you. Hope you had a good time. Uh, can you find your way back? 
Good. Now watch them rocks now. Don't get wet all over again. <laughs> yeah, I'll be around another three years. You're in the neighborhood. Look me up. We'll uh, take us another little walk. So long. God bless you. With Victor Rodman starring as John Ball and Bill Idelson as Davy, you have heard the final act of John Ball's Thanksgiving. Be sure to be with us again next week for another Heartbeat Theater story, a presentation of the Salvation Army. Heartbeat Theater is produced in Hollywood and is broadcast overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Until next week, this is your host, C.P. McGregor, saying thanks for listening and have a happy week ahead. Welcome back. I can imagine that some of our Canadian listeners might have wondered a little bit about that whole uniquely American take on uh, Thanksgiving. Because, of course, they have their own Thanksgiving uh, celebrations there in October. Though the history of their uh, Thanksgiving is obviously uh, different than ours. I, I think that uh, this was actually a pretty good uh, production. And it really does come down to the uh, performance by the lead because Victor Rodman is able to really capture this sort of folksy charm uh, with the way that John Ball is uh, portrayed. And if that portrayal isn't just right, it can, I think, just come across as overly preachy. But I think it works here and certainly provides a powerful uh, thought and a reminder of what I think a lot of people believe in their hearts should happen at Thanksgiving, but sometimes with everything going on uh, can be forgotten. I did find it interesting that uh, John Ball uh, was, it's really hard to describe. I, I know when I write the description of the episode, it's probably going to sound a bit off, because essentially what he described himself uh, as is a drifter, which I think in our society in the 21st century, we definitely do have that association that's pretty negative with that. But I think if I write the show notes with something like migrant worker, that I'm probably not capturing the sense of it either. All right, well, uh, now we do turn to some uh, listener comments and feedback, and this is regarding our Abraham Lincoln series. And he writes in regarding the episode uh, with Malice Towards None. Hi, Adam. I'm driving to work and listening to uh, Malice Towards None. Actually, I'm no longer driving because I'm writing you. You mentioned that it was originally broadcast on February 12th uh, in the 1950s. Today's youngsters only get President's Day off, so they may not be aware that February 12th was Lincoln's birthday. So this was a special episode which was sent out to the world on Lincoln's birthday. Uh, thank you for this excellent episode. Were there sound recording devices of any kind when Lincoln was alive? I don't know the timeline of that. To my mind, Massey is Lincoln's voice. Okay, well, thanks so much uh, for the comment and the question mark. Uh, I think, uh, well, first of all, there's not actual recording of Lincoln's voice, and I think Massey is really as close as we'll get to an approximation, since he based his performance off of uh, getting feedback from someone who had actually heard Lincoln speak, 
uh, when he first started playing Lincoln back in the 1930s. As for President's Day, I will, uh, I guess, be somewhat controversial and say I am not a fan of that particular uh, holiday at all, for that particular uh, construing of the holiday. For the federal holiday, it is actually still known as Washington's birthday, uh, but several states, including sadly my own, have uh, named it uh, President's Day. And I really do think that Washington and Lincoln, you might make the case for one or two others, are truly worth celebrating for the difference they made in our country. There are a whole lot of presidents, you know, not, not ones that are necessarily bad, but some that are just, you know, unremarkable in the long-term impact on history. There are some states that do Washington, Lincoln Day, and other sort of uh, ways of kind of identifying which presidents we might be celebrating. But yeah, that's, you know, not a good situation, you know, though I do understand from a practical standpoint why they're, you know, might want to avoid having a bunch of school holidays in February. And then we have uh, a couple of emails here from Joan. Uh, she writes, I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, this series. Uh, it is informative, and Raymond Massey portrays Mr. Lincoln very well. Thank you so much for bringing this series to us. And uh, she writes specifically regarding the episode, The Lonesome Train. Uh, and she says she found it very good. They were talking about the Copperheads, who or what or were they? Um, and uh, the answer to that is the Copperheads were Northerners who sided with the Confederacy and were against the Civil War. There were many different uh, levels of uh, Copperheads, including some who just called for an end of the war. There were others whose activities included... Uh, helping out the Confederates, and encouraging Union soldiers to desert. And uh, she notes that uh, Raymond Massey was actually a Canadian uh, actor, uh, born in Toronto, and uh, his brother uh, was the 18th Governor General of Canada and was also born in Toronto. Uh, and uh, he served for seven years as a Governor General, uh, general, which uh, is the Queen's representative in Canada. So thanks so much, Joan. That's some interesting facts about uh, Raymond Massey and uh, his brother. All right. Well, that will actually be all for now. Uh, we will be back with another episode of The Amazing World of Radio. We'll be back on December 20th for our Christmas episode. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.